Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to Justin's house. In this video, we're talking about Platform Analytics Workspace, specifically the last feature I need to show you so you've seen everything that you can add and have as part of your Platform Analytics Workspace, and that would be KPIs. Yes, we're gonna talk about key performance indicators. And here's what I want you to know about KPIs in Platform Analytics Workspace. This requires performance analytics all right so when performance analytics we had uh per, or indicators or um yeah basically indicators and so those in platform analytics are now referred to as kpis i think we're in the middle of a shift in how service now wants to use terminology and if you go to that tab in platform analytics workspace for kpis you're going to get a list of all the indicators that you have access to or that you've configured, okay? And it's gonna look and feel a little bit different when you actually open a KPI in this platform analytics workspace. So let's open one. I've got one here for the number of risk events. Very simple, this is a score, and you're gonna see very familiar things. I don't wanna spend too much time on the things that have been there for a while, but I do wanna point out some important details about how this has changed. Number one, up here on the upper left, we've got our KPI details. We can change the date that we're looking at, so Q3 versus Q4. I can turn on real-time scores or turn them off, and I can actually show the records that make up the KPI for things that aren't formulas or that aren't calculated. So in this case, it's just a number of risk events that were trending over time, and so I've got four KPIs, or um, four risk events that are showing there, and I can jump into those records by clicking on them. You were able to do that before. The comparison changed a little bit, looks a little bit different. So if I wanna compare Q3 to Q4, I went from eight to four, I moved out eight risk events and I added in four risk events and there was no risk events shared between the two months. So some helpful comparison stuff there and some helpful chart options. So things that you were used to seeing before like targets, thresholds, forecasts, trends, comments, labels, statistics, and time series, we can show scores so the change, increase or decrease, the change percentage, actually that might be new, but also chart types. So we can flip this to a line chart. We can show it as a spline chart. We can show it as an area chart. We can show it as the column chart, which we started off with there. And then, of course, if I want to change the amount of data or the data range, this used to be a little slider at the top. Now it is up here and you can actually set the data range and you can change that data aggregation period. Uh, right now we're doing quarterly, but if we wanted to switch to year or do a date thing, we've got some options around that, okay? All cool stuff. So I want to show you some other cool stuff that's going on here. And uh, the first one is gonna be around filtering, okay? So filtering, we can come in here and use this thing to apply different filters. So maybe I want to look at the risk event state and I only wanna see things that are still in the analyze state. So I can check that. I can see a breakdown right as I'm clicking on it to know before I select that, is it even worth clicking on and making the effort? And if I do, I can then reach up here to this apply button and click okay. So this applies to all of the different KPIs that might be in your library. And you can come in and remove the filter so that it doesn't show anymore. Now I'm seeing everything that we saw before. Cool filtering stuff there. You can imagine you get into group assignments, priorities, criticality, all kinds of things you can do there around filtering. Then you have, and I'm gonna skip one here. We're gonna show these bottom two are targets. So we have the ability to come in and create targets. We had that ability before, and they can be for me or for everyone. I have the ability to create thresholds. Again, they can be for me or they can be for everyone. I can select the threshold type, all time high, all time low, less than, more than, okay? All that stuff we had before. What is new, okay? What I'm excited about is KPI signals, all right? So KPI signals is something new I haven't seen before. It's in Tokyo, and we need to set someone responsible for the KPI before we can start working on the signals. So now I've made myself responsible, and I'm getting some configuration options around how we're gonna treat the signal. So what date period we wanna start that signal detection from, and then what is the minimum number of scores, scores and an indicator being how we've collected that, in order for it to select that. 
I'm just going to leave this as default. I'm going to confirm that. And then if there is a new signal or a past signal, I can come in and manage that. Okay, what does that look like? Well, I set one up just to see how this works before I recorded the demo around vulnerabilities and the percent container vulnerable items met remediation target. So let's take a look at that one that I configured there. We have an outlier. I have an outlier here. I've got a warning, a signal that the score is beyond the minimum expect expected value. That is more than three standard deviations away from the mean, which you're seeing there or the average right there in the middle. So this is some statistical analysis going on around the signal. I can dismiss it. I can go in and look at the settings for that signal, look at how I'm detecting them, who's responsible for them. Uh, in this case, system administrator, since I assigned it myself, how many notifications have gone out, what is the reminder, what's the reminder count, what's the, I don't even know what anti-signal factor is. It sounds cool though, right? And then I can even come in and add breakdowns for those particular signals. So if we wanted to do something like look at assignment, group priority, criticality, we could do that with the signals. Okay, so those are the two big new features in your KPIs, which are formerly performance analytics indicators, but now in the platform analytics workspace. So last piece I wanna cover before we go is how do you get these KPIs on your dashboard? I'll show you how to do that. I've got um, a dashboard here, but I'm just gonna create a new dashboard. We're gonna use the inline editor and we're gonna start and we'll just call this key performance indicators to keep it simple so you know what I'm doing. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a data visualization and add it to the dashboard and then configure that to show a scorecard or show a KPI. I could go in to back to the analytics center and go to data visualizations and create some data visualizations around KPIs. However, I've shown that before in a previous video. I have, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it now. Instead, I'm gonna just add a new one here in line with this dashboard and say, hey, I don't have anything in the library, so I'm gonna do a data visualization and start configuring this right now. So I'm gonna move my head out of the way, I'm gonna click on this container, and we're gonna do the configure, the visualization type. Right now, as a single score, that's fine, because I was looking at that KPI, which was the number of risk events, right? So that's all I really need. So for a single score, what we're gonna look for here is the data source that we're gonna set up in that single score. In a previous video for the data source, I went and selected some tables from my Tokyo Features application. In this case, we're gonna select a KPI instead of a table. So I'll go ahead and click this Add Data Source button and you're gonna see that live, me adding that. So we'll do that. Move my head out of the way again this time. What I didn't cover in the other video where I selected those tables is when you're searching these sources here at the top, you get some suggestions and not look at this. You get tables or you get indicators, right? It doesn't say KPIs. That would have been helpful for service now. It says indicators and these are your KPIs that we were just looking at on the previous screen. I had some around number of risk events. So I'm gonna look for that one here, number of risk events. And that is gonna be what I select. Notice just like my table, I can use some filtering around breakdowns and I've got a selection here I can pick from. Otherwise, this is pretty much what my score is gonna look like when I add it to the dashboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add source, which is just behind my head. And I want you to see where this button is, bottom right hand side. We're just gonna add that source and that's gonna populate my data visualization up here above my head. And I can still do all the same things I did before around the chart title and stuff like that. So this was number of risk events. What is the title of that? So I'll just click off of that. We will save this. We will exit editing mode. And now I have that KPI, that key performance indicator showing on a dashboard and basically using the indicators from performance analytics like I had before. And if you click on these, it'll take you to the KPI details, which is where we started this entire video showing you this new capability within Platform Analytics Workspace. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in the next experience reporting and dashboarding with KPIs and KPI signals in ServiceNow. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.